What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. Dead Meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James A. Janice. I'm Chelsea Rebecca, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Yeah, we do. We do. And we got not that scared uh, during this week's episode, where we watched the movie Wrong Turn. Yeah. Uh, we watched this because right now we're kind of trying to appease the people who want kill counts of certain things, but they're just going to have to wait for them. A lot of people have requested Wrong Turn, so we figured, hey, we'd check it out, do a little review of it. Yeah, I got a lot of emails requesting this one, too, so, you know, I thought we'd check it out. And, you know, not to yuck anyone's yums but how does this have how many other movies five there are six wrong turns total what well, that many times you're bound to make a right turn maybe we should have looked at the ratings for the other apparently you know, the second the one is the highest rated interesting the best regarded and apparently two and three are sequels and then four five six are prequels, prequels. that's right i just you know i didn't have any burning questions about the I don't think they have a name. I just realized the... Oh, the Mountain Men? I think they're Is just that the Mountain what they're Men. Called? Okay. I believe it's the Mountain Men. They what have... are their names? Like uh, Snaggletooth. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sawtooth, Three Finger, and One Eye, something like that. They're like TLC. So yeah, Wrong Turn 2003, directed by Rob Schmidt, produced by Stan Winston. Yeah. Stan Winston is major childhood <laughs> stan winston is a visual effects artist and stan winston studios does visual effects for movies uh he did a little known movie called jurassic park he also did aliens iron man <laughs> so stan winston very well renowned visual effects person who produced wrong turn mm -hmm. the 2003 horror movie did that he have a hand in any of the makeup or yes okay he did yes 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 effects were done by stan winston studios okay. presumably him personally sure yeah so he did like the mountain man effects okay i guess some of the gore although I, I mean i guess the gore's okay i was a little worried at first when a couple of the kills early on were off screen like the first four are all pretty off screen but then they like they make up for it there's a pretty cool death in this yeah there's the some cool ones. Yeah, there's some cool ones. Yeah. We start with a, a cold open for this movie, mm -hmm. which is always exciting. And I, I liked this cold open. Oh, the rock climbing? I think it was uh all downhill from there. Ah. A little bit. Oh, God. I didn't mean <laughs> to make that joke. Chelsea hates jokes like that, I but do. she's really good at but making I, them. <laughs> I, I make them on accident a lot. No, it was a, it was a fun cold open because we've got a couple and they're mountain climbing and... Uh, and the girl's lagging behind and she's like babe just pull me up i can't and he's like j basically just going off to explore and yeah, he's, he's like no nah, fuck you i'll fine. see you when you get up here yeah and uh so then she hears some noises and her her boyfriend he gets thwacked off yeah. screen it's a real good thwack yeah that you hear and then and then of course his body like partially falls yeah. over the edge and then some blood drips down onto her. Mm -hmm. It's a it is a fun scene when uh who the killer, whoever it is up there, it's the mountain men, start pulling her up mm -hmm. on her rope and then she like tries to disengage and can't and so she like cuts the line. It, yeah, it's That's cool. Good... And she jumps to to her boyfriend's rope and tries to climb down. And then she falls and it looks like it hurts really bad. Yeah. You don't want to fall yeah. while uh while and... rock climbing. But she's able to get up and run. Yeah. Until she gets tripped by barbed wire, yeah, a barbed wire thing, and then I think just pulled off screen. Yeah, yeah, and then it's cut to yeah titles, which I I liked that little open. It was like a nice little short film. Yeah, yeah, it really was. You know, so this is a movie that takes place in West Virginia, mm -hmm. which is uh by most accounts I would say the most rural uh state of mm -hmm. the United States, or at least you know the eastern ruralness, uh not wild west. Yeah, type rural. it's I think. Rule is hard and, to say. Yeah, I feel like this has been the case for many decades. If you know you had to name a working class state, go well, West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, that's coal country. Yeah, that's Appalachia. That yes. is, uh, that is poverty. It is. It's, it's like poverty. extreme poverty, which is unfortunate. And so, I will say off the bat that this is one of those movies where it's uh, the the city folk 
coming in and getting murdered and hunted by the redneck mountain man, the Appalachian man. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a subgenre of its own at this point. Uh, they even name drop Deliverance, which they is do, like the yeah. best indication of this. But there was a whole chapter devoted to this in the post 9-11 horror book that we often cite. Mm-hmm. About this 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 trend of uh, city people coming in and and getting destroyed by nature and the inhabitants of that nature, and you know what? Sometimes it kind of rubs me the wrong way because it's a little bit because sometimes you get weird undertones of um, fear of poor people. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a class fear kind of thing. It's a very thing. classist thing. Sometimes. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, this is this is always been there hills have eyes Mm -hmm. uh even texas chainsaw massacre a little bit (laughs) i feel like in a lot of these movies it's also kind of implied there's like some incest going on oh this isn't even implied the opening credits is really long opening credits by the way you get basically every single person that works on this which is cool because movies don't do that anymore Mm -hmm. um but you get basically a slideshow of newspaper articles that are like psychotic side effects of inbreeding and then weird pictures of deformed babies and stuff yeah like hunchbacks and stuff like it that. reminded me of that new slender man trailer just the way oh, it was God. edited if you guys haven't <laughs> seen that trailer it looks and not good <laughs> <laughs> but i can't wait to see it hell yeah javier botet oh that's right yeah we're kind of obsessed with javier botet who's playing slender man he is wonderful I would love to interview him. Mm -hmm. He is an amazing character actor and has scared the fuck out of me many times. He's a, and a very handsome man. He is. He's super handsome. Yeah. So this is West Virginia backcountry. That's the setting for this movie. That's what we're in. I've got to say that. uh, So, so I saw this when it came out probably, and then not since then. So it was slowly coming back to me as I was watching it and watching it. You know, I'm like, why does this movie need to be made? We've seen this all before. But in the end, I think it's 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 an all right iteration of this movie. So what do you think makes it different from other movies, which we kind of termed Sawney Bean movies? Yes. After if if you listen to our horror movies inspired by True Events episode, you know that Sawney Bean is a Scottish folktale about an inbred family of cannibals and uh, so it, it directly inspired The Hills of Eyes. So there's kind of, you know, yeah. you think about it, horror has its own little family of films. And for me, that, that uh, Off Season by Jeff, Jack Ketchum, which yeah. I had read shortly before recording that podcast, and which I think some viewers have picked up and read after I oh, mentioned shit. it, which is like... <laughs> Do you traumatize them? It's the most graphic thing I've yeah. ever read. But that's what I think of when I see stories like this, is uh, Off Season, and yeah, Sonny Bean, which uh, Off Season was directly... Uh, based on Sonny De- Bean. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a Sonny Bean story. As far as what makes it different goes, I don't think anything. Okay. I don't think there's anything that stands out that's like, this is why this movie needed to get made to show this thing. But I think the sum of its parts ended up being okay. There, For me, there are a lot of memorable set pieces. You got the, like the abandoned cars, like the junkyard. That scene's good with mm-hmm. the classic military maneuver. Uh, uh-huh. there's like the watchtower and the treetops as ridiculous as those scenes are. They stand out oh, to me man. and they, they're <laughs> memorable. Yeah. So I don't know. And maybe it's just having had seen it when it came out sure. as a, as a new time viewer. How do you feel about I, that assessment? The, the scene with all the abandoned cars reminded me of the Texas Chainsaw remake. Cause isn't there a scene in that where they find a whole lot of abandoned cars? Am I imagining that. I can't keep them. I can't keep I know, them straight that's anymore. A, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Because all these movies <laughs> but, are like this. I don't know. It's fine. I, you know, it's not my favorite, but I did laugh very hard at a few things that probably weren't supposed to be that funny. Yeah. I, I don't know. I was entertained, and sometimes here. that's what you want. You know, sometimes you don't want to be uh, intellectually challenged during mm-hmm. a movie. You just want to watch something dumb and. It had enough different stuff going on. Sure. All the time. Yeah. The characters kept moving to different places. Yeah. Enough to keep my interest. Yeah. And it's a short little guy. It's uh, 80 some minutes. So good job. Wrong turn. So overall, I feel like it's a mediocre movie. That's fine. James, I forgot (laughs) when you said classic military maneuver. This is a line in this movie that has become such an inside joke in the couple days since we've watched it that I forgot it even came from this. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, so after after that cold open and the long credits, we open in on our our classic shots of all the trees, all the wilderness, just to show you, oh, this is a big wilderness mm-hmm. country. It's in Greenbrier Backcountry, West Virginia, and there is a super bland dude. Oh, man, our main character is bland. Yeah. As fuck. Oh, have you, by the way, have you ever been to West Virginia? I forget if you... West Virginia is one of the very few states in the Union that I have not even driven through, I think. Okay. Because it's kind of situated in a way to where, like, why would you need to? It's a, yeah, we we purposely went there on a vacation when I was a kid. Yeah. We stayed in a camp and I fucking loved it. Cuz oh. we went around Christmas time and uh, so if we have any listeners who live in or around Wheeling, West Virginia, we stayed there. They have a crazy ass Christmas light show where you can drive around and they have just thousands and thousands of Christmas lights and you can take a little horse drawn carriage and so that's what we did. Oh, and nice. I just remember driving through the mountains and stuff and I really liked it. Yeah, I mean I have a lot of experience in the Appalachian Mountains with uh western Pennsylvania because mm-hmm. I had family there so we would visit that growing up. Yeah. So I have I have personally good associations with West Virginia because I enjoyed it as a child. That's good. Yeah. Our main dude is played by Desmond Harrington, mm-hmm. I believe best known for his role on Dexter. He came in in season three mm-hmm. as a Joey. He ended up being uh, romantically involved with Dexter's sister, Deb, who is uh, who, who was played by Michael C. Hall's wife, which was weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I think they got divorced during the, during the show's run. Yeah. But yeah, so this dude, I'm sorry. He is... Uh... I don't know if it's a him problem or a director problem, but every, or, or every line is th- like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. As far as the line delivery goes, yeah, yeah. He, get, he gets a little bit more lively later. Oh, like a little more lively, <laughs> li- you know? But other than that, he's mostly pretty straight faced. Yeah. And, uh, He's a doctor. Yeah, we gather he. Uh, do we learn he's a doctor right away? He's he's you know dressed nicely. We learn that he's a city folk he's right away. He's a city boy. He's got a nice car and uh, he's very clean cut. And he gets stuck in traffic. Oh no! Oh no! So he hops out of his car and he walks up to the semi truck to see what's up. And the guy you expect is gonna pop out of this truck does. The guy <laughs> yep. just sticks his head out the window and is like, "Hell, hello, what?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, commit. Do it. What do you got here? No, I... What do you got there? Because you started to sound a, bit, a little bit like Donovan from Survivor. Part of my strategy, you know, is to be a fun, loving, dancing, you know, type of individual. Go ahead and do your Donovan. <laughs> It'll work. So Chris... Okay, so Chris walks up and asks what's going on, and... Uh, the trucker says? The trucker says... Oh, God, what was the reason there's traffic? Chemicals spill off the way. Oh, there's... there's chemicals fell up the way it's gonna be backed up for about two three hours Uh, is this offensive it's what that character sounds like he sounds like a cartoon character yeah Yeah. he's got i mean a lot of this cast the west of the native west virginians of this cast have basically those novelty bubba teeth in (laughs) that you can buy at party city do you know yeah yeah especially the gas station owner that's that's when i wrote that note is that gas station owner he has a single tooth you guys yeah he literally does it's pretty amazing so the truck owner or the truck driver i'm i hope he owns his truck i hope he's well off enough to own that truck but yeah he explains (laughs) that there's a chemical spill up the way and then he makes fun of the guy for like Oh, you do your hair a lot or something like that and like the guy just has like a buzz cut <laughs> i thought that was weird too. it was a weird thing it, it felt like they wrote that line into the script before and then, they cast anyone and then they cast him Maybe. and was like he has really short hair just leave the just line leave it. it's fine i can't come up with an alt yeah get back in your car what is it like smooth hair over a few more times or yeah and that's a funny moment when he says that and the the main guy, Chris, like his reaction. I thought that was funny because he was like, OK, thanks. And then just leaves. He's like, oh, I, I see how yeah. this is going to be. Yeah, exactly. I like that. <clears throat> so but, this guy is not going to sit in traffic for mm-mm. a few hours. Nope. Uh, well, he's he got a business has, meeting. Yeah, a b- business. He's got, he's got doctor he's business. Just, yeah, I was going to say. He, he's got doctor business. Got to get there. Got to order some know. scalpels. Yeah, he's got... Yeah, they have to wash all the <laughs> medical equipment. They have to sterilize everything. It's very important. It's very important. He's got to be somewhere uh, in a few hours. So he drives backwards. I forget, how does this work? He gets off the highway well, and goes he to He somehow a... gets off the highway. Yeah. And... Yeah, he goes back and goes to a gas station where 
our one tooth Willie sitting That's there. Right, the is this, dirtiest man you've ever seen. Yeah, is this one he takes? Does he take the wrong turn to get oh. to this gas station? Mm-hmm. I think we we see. No, no, no. He, the I think the wrong turn is getting oh, on Bear Oh, is that Country. road? Okay. Yeah, Bear Mile Road. So or yeah, so he stops at this gas station, which is, but you know, it's it's the gas station from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. And, it, it's the gas movies. station from Cabin, Cabin in, in the, the Woods. woods. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the one that it's that's that. based on. So you have a man with one tooth who uh, chugging Pepto Bismol. Ew, I forgot. He's he is chugging dr- it. He's not even like you know taking a sip of it. He's just sitting there drinking Pepto Bismol like it's a beer. It's yeah. disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a beer, and he's trying to get it's day drunk. Such, honestly. I think that's such a good touch because you immediately know something is fucked up, you know? Yeah. No one does that. If you do, what the fuck? Because Pepto-Bismol is gross. No, it's not. So I, Okay. It I was going to say good. some people like it. I You're like it. Like, that's disgusting. I think I like you it. Know. Would you sit there and drink it like No. That? <laughs> <laughs> Not unless I had an excuse to. The gas station man tells Chris, well, there's this road that goes around basically where all the traffic is. So you can take that and He doesn't even do that. Chris brings it upon himself. He looks at oh, the map and is like, map. what's this dotted line, Bear Mile Road or whatever? Oh, okay. And the guy's like, I don't know much about that. Oh, yeah. And then, and then Chris is like, thank you very much. You take care, okay? You're the one going to take care. You're, You're the one, one going to take, take care. care. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We poke fun because literally every uh, West Virginian character in this movie is that stereotype. It's so funny. And they're all such dicks to him. And he's not even like a bad guy. Normally in these movies, like in Deliverance and stuff, the the out-of-towner, the city folk, they're like arrogant and rude. Yeah. This, this guy's guy, a doctor. Yeah, and he's done nothing wrong. He's very pleasant <laughs> he's and He's just polite. boring as fuck. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. just boring. Yeah, he's too boring he to be mean. He just is a city folk. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, bad. So Chris takes off from the gas station and he makes the wrong turn. There he is. There it is. He makes the wrong turn onto Bear Mile Road. Oh, which Bear is, Mountain Road. You're right. I wrote Bear Mile. Bear Mile Mountain Road is a dirt road yeah. that he drives onto and immediately proves himself as the most distracted driver. The most city folk driver because oh he God. sees a dead deer and can't stop he, looking at it. He like is adjusting <laughs> his rear <laughs> view mirror to look at it. And then, but that's only after he drops a CD, a Queens of the Stone Age CD. So I get it. That's, you want to listen? Yeah, you want to pick that back up. But off he's the like floor. fishing for it, and like, dude, you're the only car on this road. Pull over and do yeah. this. So he immediately uh, runs right into a car that has all the other main characters in it. There's six of them. They're all sexy teens. Sexy teens. One of them is Jeremy Sisto from Suburgatory. And even though this is a mere seven years before that uh, show, when he plays a, the sexy dad in it, uh, here he looks like a baby. But I immediately recognize him because of his voice. He's, he's got a really distinct voice. It's a very cool voice. It is, yeah. And he's also cool. like 6'3". This is a great man, Jeremy Sisto. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd be fine if I died and came back as Jeremy Sisto. So Jeremy Sisto's there. Uh, Eliza Dushku. Dushku, Dushku. Oh yeah, D- yeah. She's the the last character that we meet, and we get this kind of hot girl reveal of hot her. Hot girl like, reveal. Like we meet all the other characters. So we've got Jeremy Sisto. We got his fiance. Emmanuel uh, Shriki. his his yeah yeah yeah. Emmanuel whatever was what it? Shriki, I think. Sure, and her name is uh, is it? It's Sporty Spice is what her name is because that <gasps> outfit is just and so. And her hair too. She yep. is Sporty Spice. Yeah, she's got like the sweatpants and then the crop top, uh, tight fit tank top, and then yeah, like the the ponytail, yeah. the high ponytail. She he's just marrying Sporty Spice, which I mean, it's two thousand three. I mean, that's fine. A few of them have some Spice Girls, like the they're all doing the Francine's got some Spice Girls hair too. Mm. It's, and and it's they're re- all got the midriffs. It's residual nineties. It's residual fashion 90s. for sure. So it's it's Evan and Francine, mm-hmm. and they're gonna stay with the car while get everyone else goes to look. Or a gas station or a phone or something. Something. Cause, but like Chris knows that there's not a phone and he brings that up. I forget w- why they're going back to the gas station or whatever. I don't know. They have to go away from the car. They need they to. They need to get the plot, away okay? from this damn car. So that Jeremy, uh, or not Jeremy, so that 
Evan can get a friggin' uh, Jeep grill b- blowjob. Yes. First, well, first they light up, which is nice. They get real high. They get real high, and then they, yeah. Then Francine gives him a blowjob. She's on like, the roof of the car. Drop those pants. Drop those pants, boy. Don't be a sissy. Oh, she does say that. Yeah, that was a good Francine. Thank you. Uh, then yeah, he gets an off-screen blowjob from her, just on the hood of this car. So they're gonna die. Oh That's yeah. That's how we know. That's how we know they're gonna die. Yep. So while the others are away, yeah, they get they get killed. Yeah. Oh, well, Francine sucks, by the way. She does. She's she, just tossing. She's going through. They're in, they're not even in their car. They're in Chris's car. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're looking through Chris's stuff, and they're throwing his CDs all over the place. Yeah, CDs, dude. You can't and scratch those his granola bars. She's eating them. Oh yeah, and, he, and he's asking if she found any food, and she's like, <laughs> no. no, I don't want nothing. And then Kevin just disappears. Uh, Evan? Evan. But he's played by Kevin? Yes. Evan oh, okay. just disappears. and <laughs> Yeah, that's it. It's, I, oh, I, oh, I we guess do see inbreeding later. makes you very quiet. That's one of the, <laughs> the side effects. Because he is just like spirited away. Yeah. He like evaporates. Yeah. And then uh, Francine gets garroted through the mouth. Oh, nice. With, uh, with some barbed wire. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that's it for them. Yeah. That was real fast cut back to the other people walking around the yeah the main people there's some fake jump scares which i don't appreciate oh yeah because the they're fiance scaring each other. scares yeah they're all scaring each other <laughs> yeah i think that's when he mentions uh deliver no they mentioned deliverance in the yeah place, and while but... they're walking to uh the house they eventually find uh jeremy sister and his fiance emmanuel that's their real names. I don't remember their character names. They're talking about how their wedding, and he suggests maybe eloping, and she yeah. says, I think if you ever want to get in my pants again... Affirmative. This is the last time you use the E word, okay? Don't you ever say, say the, the E word. word again. He also goes off on this whole thing about the yes. wedding singer, and he's like, I think we should hire a, uh, you know, a Frank Sinatra type uh, uh, lead singer for the band as opposed to a, a James Brown type lead singer, because... You know, really, let's be honest, there's only one James Brown, and, you know, a faux James Brown is, is, is really quite intolerable. It makes it sound like for every wedding, you have to pick between a James Brown singer and a Frank Sinatra singer. Yeah. Because he was like, nothing's worse than a fake James Brown singer. It's like, what is this dialogue? It's very weird. I can't tell if if, if that was written or they asked him to riff. Because it, it's to me, it smells a little bit like, okay, just talk about, you know, planning your wedding, go. And he is just... Yeah. Making up this kind of weird thing. If it's a riff, that's fine. That's yeah. a decent riff. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Carly is her name. They eventually find this dirty old house, and there's a bunch of dirty old stuff in it, like bone stew. Oh, yeah. And then jars of jaws and teeth. And, you know, you got your usual Ed Gein type stuff going on here. Just body parts and skin and belongings of other people who have met the fate that these people surely will soon. At one point, Carly tells Jeremy's sister that she is pissed off and she's ready to get out of here and I want to go to a motel and you're going to draw me a bath and be prepared to give me lots of orgasms. Oh, yeah. Ew, she wants to take a bath at a motel, yeah. you freak. That's she so She wants gross. to take a bath in a motel <laughs> in rural West Virginia. No. Sorry, Carly, but if that's your MO, if that's your lifestyle... You've got something. You just can't be doing that. Yeah, that's nasty. That's a gross thing. That's almost as gross as the bone stew they find. Yeah, it's almost as gross as this house that they're just like, they're just pawing at stuff in. Yeah. They're touching everything. And there's, uh, they start seeing piles of sunglasses that look pretty new and a a princess tiara that looks like a little kid's tiara. Oh, no, they stole a princess. Oh, no. They kidnapped a princess. (laughs) They they keep finding all these weird piles of things. They go to leave right when the mountain men come back and they got a tow truck and they're towing their vehicles. They see that their vehicles are all towed. Yeah. And then they they have to hide because they can't get out the back door. So they hide together. Uh, uh, Chris and Eliza Dushku hide underneath the table, and Jeremy Sisto and his fiance uh, Carly just hide behind a door. They're in some other room. They're just in another room. Yeah. But they are able to witness through a keyhole in a very CG oh crazy my shot. God, this shot is out of control. There's some of those shots in this movie where it's like it's that early CG, but <laughs> the director just must have been like, I have a really cool idea for a shot. We can use CG can to make it happen, CG, right? Yeah. And they do. 
and it's fine, mm-hmm. but like it's early CG. It's so it looks a little weird. It's swooping just little... shot yeah. where it's a bunch of shit comped on top of itself. Mm-hmm. It, it's a shot that swoops through this keyhole and you see uh the girl's eye and you see her friend getting chopped up reflected in her eye and oh yeah you, you know the idea is cool it just looks kind of weird <laughs> it just looks like in uh, 10 years later that would have been a very good nothing wrong with that shot sure yeah it's fine <laughs> it just feels a like you were weird. gonna say good but then nothing wrong with it <laughs> fine it's shot it's it's fine yeah but yeah they see francine's body getting mutilated by creatures they're the mountain men they're basically creatures yeah there's three of them like we We said earlier don't hear them talk you hear them and i don't you never hear them talk uh they just make sounds three finger giggles yeah he's the little giggler guy running around he's also played by a dude he's played by a dude named julian richings who is in saw four uh, I didn't really touch on this scene at all in my kill count, so this is just for the saw heads out there. But oh. it's in Saw 4 when Rig goes to the motel uh, for one of his tasks, and he walks in, and there's, like, the junky homeless guy sitting there in the, the lobby, and he starts yelling at Rig, and he almost gets into a fight with him. That's Julian Riching. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, Good that's stuff. Yeah, the guy who laughs, the giggler in here. Yeah, so they, um, you know, we got everything. We've got cleft palates. We've got hunchbacks. We've got weird fingers. We've got uh, mottled skin. Like, it's just, like, yeah. you know, hair that's it's growing patchy. in patches. Yeah. You know, every... Their eyes are all fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Every, you know, possible birth defect you could have <laughs> via inbreeding, they got it. Yep. Uh, so after apparently after they chop up and eat Francine, it's snap time. They all just oh, take yeah, a nap. Oh, yeah, they all, it's like post-Thanksgiving nap. They're yeah. all tired. They got the itis. when our, our main characters try to make their escape. I, I like how they just go to sleep where they are. Yeah. They, like, don't go into another room or anything. They just pass out on tabletops and shit where they are. Yeah. But that allows our main characters to sneak out. But on the way out, uh, oh, yeah, there's a fun thing with, like, a metal coil in the door and chris grabs it to be quiet and his yeah hand starts bleeding. there's a few times they bump into some stuff where they make a noise and it's kind of looney tunes <laughs> yeah but uh so chris holds the door open and everyone else gets out and then chris looks back <laughs> and one of them just looking at him he's just, just laying there <laughs> with his eyes open just like hey so <laughs> where are you going man and then they all run and up a up hill the, okay so this house is situated <laughs> off a road kind of back a ways there's a field in front of it and behind it there's a very very steep hill borderline mountain so which way do they go they run up the hill straight up straight up this hill <laughs> fuck it let's go uphill by the way in my notes i have um manicure watch uh for emmanuel shriki's character at mm-hmm. this point her manicure is still perfect oh. she has french uh french manicure her nails are really clean and just really good and what, what's a what is a French mag. It's when you got the the tips. It's not super popular anymore. Um, it, it's when your nails are really long and they're square shaped on top. Okay. And the tip is painted white, and the rest of the nail is just kind of nail color. Oh. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That's not a thing anymore. Not really. Interesting. I could see it making a comeback. You never really think of nail fashion as going through stages and changing. Oh, it does. It I do. believe it. Yeah. But anyway, her French manicure uh, looking great this whole movie somehow. <laughs> I do. I, I wrote here that I like all of the, um, there's a lot of wide panning shots that are kind of flat. Like they're they're um, almost like the shots in the second Strangers movie that we talked about where there are these really wide, flat shots where everything is in focus. Mm-hmm. And it's cool that, you know, we'll pan down to the house and you the frame is so wide. You see how big the woods are and stuff. And I like those shots. I think they're neat. Yeah, any shot where it shows off the wilderness and the size of it all is good. I do like the shot when they're at the top of the hill and they look down. And I think it's like a zoom in on the mountain men getting into the truck and driving off and like hooting and hollering. Yeah, I, yeah stuff that's like a, that's cool. Yeah, that's a real cool it's, shot. Yeah. Because it's like that far away vantage point And it's like, oh, shit. They probably know where they're going Mm -hmm. to, like, come get us somehow. Mm -hmm. At this point, Carly takes on the role of just crying and being all of a mess. She, like, trips in the woods and just cries. Her fiancé says, I'm going to get you out of here, and baby, we're going to get married. (laughs) That's all Jeremy Sisto can talk about. (laughs) Uh, So you know that's not going to happen. Sorry, spoiler alert. 
So uh, they do get to that junkyard. They find Coachella. Bun- <laughs> it's a bunch of cars with, <laughs> it looks like there's tents and stuff. Yeah. You know, there's stuff all over. It there's looks like of blood, day but it does three look of Coachella. Like, for sure it does. <laughs> yeah. And so they're hiding there when the three mountain men show up. And then we realize, oh, yeah, you got the little guy who's running around. That's three finger. And then the other two among them, one of them is a big dude who I think is played by a pro wrestler, uh-huh. which is cool. A Canadian pro wrestler uh, mm-hmm. who also passed away in recent years. So oh, that's, shit. That's a shame. But uh, he has an, a hatchet or an axe and a rifle. Okay. So he's got a gun. And then the third dude is an archer. I was going to say there's the archer. He's a fucking dope ass archer. Which is fun. Yeah. I think bow and arrow is always fun when it shows up in horror. It's scary. Yeah. Like it's. Your next is yeah. a good use of it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's essentially the same thing as the rifle as far as there's a ranged attack on you, but it seems so scary. Yeah. And it's good. Mm-hmm. So this is when we get our classic military maneuver. Classic military maneuver. Is it Jeremy Sisto that says that? Yeah. He's like, all right, guys, here's the plan. I'm going to cause a distraction and you guys run the other way. So while they're chasing me, you guys will run to their truck, which Which has, they left running. They left running yeah. and it's got the keys in it and stuff. Uh, and then you'll come get me. And it's a classic. We'll military it's a classic. Don't worry about that guy. It's a classic maneuver. military yeah. maneuver. Chris volunteers to do this. That's right. Because you got to have the main character show how brave and noble he is. So well, he's like, I'll go. And he runs and then gets fucking shot right away in the lake. Amazing. Yeah. Classic military <laughs> Cla- maneuver. Yeah. He runs. <laughs> this three, is when this became a joke. Three seconds in, he gets shot through the leg with an arrow. It's so No, no, funny. this one's the gun. It's a rifle. Really? That he gets shot in the leg with. Yeah. Oh. That just like, <laughs> just, um, yeah, he takes off. Boom, he's down. Yeah, he's down. Oh, Classic shit. Then maneuver. other guy's like, fuck. And then he runs. Yeah. Classic military maneuver. Yeah. So Jeremy Sisto, that's when he runs off into the woods. Got it. And so the <laughs> girls, uh, the, the mountain men chase Jeremy Sisto. The girls scoop up injured, bland Chris, and they get to the truck, mm-hmm. and they drive off. The plan worked. Classic military maneuver. Yeah. So now they've got to get the other guy who's running around. Whose name is Scott. Scott. They Apparently. gotta go get Scott. Yep, that's Jeremy Sisto. Who Scott. is uh, running through the woods, and they're driving next to him. They see him on the road. Yeah, they're on, on the, the road. They're on the road, and, and he's coming down through the woods to to meet them on the road. And then I like this. I, I thought this, this is this really too. cool because you see from their point of view Scott running towards them, and then he just kind of stops and like kind of looks confused. And then they're like, "Come on, dude, let's go!" And so he like starts again, and then you hear a, and then he like st- stumbles again. And then you hear a third one and you realize that like, oh, he's been shot from the air because he turns around and he has three arrows in his back. Yeah. But I just love that that first one you don't see or hear. Yeah. You just see him kind of like stop. Because your POV is you're in the car and so the car sounds you wouldn't hear. Yeah. Pretty much. So I think that's really cool. It was cool. Yeah. He gets St. Sebastian. It's a shame that Jeremy Sisto's out of the picture now. Yeah. Because I like him a lot. He was a little like quippy. For yeah. My taste. Yeah, you didn't watch the You're biased because you. Yeah, I'm biased. I, I get it. Yeah, because he was on the very underrated show Suburgatory, also featuring Cheryl Hines and our boy Alan Tudyk. Oh, mm-hmm. you did like that show a lot. It was, it was a good on. show, dude. It was a good show. Um. So now he's dead. Yeah, and, and now Chris gets two chicks at the same time. <laughs> you didn't even have to get a million dollars. He is comforting. Carly, like he's her fiance now. Yeah. <laughs> She's basically in his lap and he is petting her hair and just holding her. Uh, there is a cool shot of the mountain men approaching Scott's body. It's like a far oh. away shot and they, they all approach from different sides of the frame mm-hmm. and his body's in the middle and it's like real far away and they all just kind of converge on it. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, a, a lot of good in this movie. Sure, yeah. I just think overall it's kind of a like, it's, we've seen this all before. Yeah. But like the, the little bits, the little specifics are like, oh damn, yeah, some mm-hmm. good stuff, good stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, they're in the truck, they're driving down this back road I kept waiting for them to find Kathy Bates from Rat Race. <laughs> selling squirrels. <laughs> selling squirrels by the side of the road. Hey, who wants to go home with the nice ladies, huh? Oh, Pippi, Pippi. Oh, don't be afraid. I don't bite. What's your name, pretty lady? Jesse says something about how Scott died trying to protect us. You know, classic military maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> so they, get, they hop out of the car. Because uh, they run to a roadblock. Yeah. Yeah. 
Chris now has a Gandalf staff and is walking around with it. Oh, yeah, because his leg's all fucked up. Yeah, he got so shot. Yeah, so he's limping. Yeah. Good thing he's a doctor, though. Um, I have a manicure watch update in my notes. Yes. They're still perfect. Oh, okay. They're very clean. Uh, You know what? I'm just going to ask for a spoiler. Are they ever not? No, they're always good. Okay. Yeah. Good Somehow good it's amazing. <laughs> they leave the truck and they wind up at a watchtower. Oh my God. Yeah. They start climbing this ladder and it looks like they're on fucking Endor. It's the craziest shot. It is maybe a matte painting. It's, yeah. I don't know what's going on. It's definitely not real, whatever so, it is. It looks so different than the rest of the movie that we just started laughing. Yeah. It looks like they're legitimately <laughs> on another planet. It's so <laughs> fucking weird. And they go up into this watchtower. It's so high up there. It's really, really high up. And up there they find a radio Yes. that Carly finds. She stares at for mm, five seconds and then says, it's a radio. <laughs> <laughs> she figured it out. She got it. She got it. Good yeah. job. And they, they start trying to use it, and that's when the mountain men show up. Yeah, because they, they radio SOS, Mayday, and no one responds back for a bit. The mountain men show up. They, they're carrying torches. Mm-hmm. And then that's when the raid. The guy's like, oh, hey, guys, what's up? What's your emergency? And so then the mountain men figure out they're in the watchtower. Yeah. So here's here's where it gets a little frustrating. Here's where it gets dumb is what you mean. Because the mountain, in many ways, I, my brain just was like, oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And then, oh, it's, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. So the mountain men start climbing up the watchtower to get them, right? My thought is, open they that fucking door. the high ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> open that fucking door and drop some shit down on Yeah, because the door is in the bottom of the watchtower. It's the tower. floor. Yeah. Yeah. So open that shit up. It's like treehouse style. They have to crawl through the floor to get up into the watchtower. Yeah, and start dro- you just, have so much just shit up drop there. Stuff on drop stuff Drop the radio on there. Well, maybe not, but drop all the or rest just of the heavy ha- shit. Or just like chop their hands off. Yeah. Some. They're climbing They're, a this ladder. This is the best position you're going to be in all night. Yeah. Instead... They block it. They barricade. They the barricade door. themselves in, in, in what this the wooden fuck? watchtower. <laughs> yeah. In this wooden watchtower from the mountain men with torches. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what's gonna happen. Wonder. Well, I don't know. What's Maybe that? they're oh. gonna fucking light it on fire. Oh, what's that smell? <laughs> Obviously, they light the it on fire. The fucking watchtower's on fire. <laughs> they're tr- and then they they realize oh they're trying to smoke us out. Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Dude, you're a doctor. So now here's I'm the a freaking most... YouTuber and I figured that okay. one out. <laughs> here's the most amazing plan of all time. Yeah, oh my God. How? Chris comes up with the idea to jump out of the watchtower onto the trees that are next to it. And these are these gigantic. Are huge trees. I would imagine like even uh, what sequoias. I mean, they're not, but they're, they're big, big ass trees. pine trees. Yeah. They're very, very, very high up. And so his plan is jump into the trees. Yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. Jump into the trees. They- the branches will stop us. No. And so he's like, I'll go first. <laughs> yeah. No shit you're going to go first because those ladies are just going to fall and kill themselves yeah. in this whack-ass idea. So he he jumps and he... He's just a flying squirrel. It, yeah. It's very flying squirrel pose or, or um, circus acrobat. like mm-hmm. the, so he, he reminded me of Robin and Batman and Robin. Oh, yes. Straight up with the hair and yeah. everything and doing oh this. Oh, my God. Yeah. His circus life background. Yeah. Wow. This might be like the continuation of that. Like maybe Batman and Robin, Batman dies. And then Robin's like, I'm 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 hanging up the tape. I'm Dick Grayson now. I'm going to go back to join the Grayson family circus. Yeah. And be a doctor and take a road trip. (laughs) I don't know, man. Um, So then uh, Eliza Dushku goes. uh, She fucking. (laughs) She both of the girls jump like they're jumping into a pool. It is nuts. They don't even try to put their hands out or grab anything. (laughs) I she lands gut first she, on a branch, yeah. I think. And then I think Carly jumps in, like, almost butt first. Like, you kind of do it. Like, if you're next to a pool and someone pushes you in and you're like, oh, huh. yeah, they just kind of act like the trees are water. And it's very weird. And it, But it works. It works. They, they, get, they, like, go through a couple of branches and then land on bigger branches. They and land in the, in the sound stage with all the treetops in it. Oh, yeah. The rest <laughs> of this is all green screen behind them <laughs> for sure. Because yeah. they're walking on these fake branches. I mean, this is when it really becomes Endor. It's 
it's yeah they're just, they look like they're fucking ewoks just walking around in these trees and this very foggy well-lit forest everyone's running around in these branches like it's nothing yeah like it's a playground it's so they're just hopping from tree yeah. to tree it's insane and then uh three finger the little guy he climbs a tree mm-hmm. to get at him <clears throat> and this is when we get a cool kill yeah this is the golden chainsaw right here yeah because uh carly is like leaning up against a tree and she gets fucking dehafficated to, Just, oh nice yeah i wrote that down <laughs> is it with the hatchet uh a- hatchet axe something like that a big blade on a stick yeah <laughs> swings in and hits her like in the mouth level yeah and then it's one of those those weird swooping cg shots but it's cool because mm-hmm. like the director was like i have a vision for this kill and it's like all right we can do it with cg mm-hmm. and it looks cool because like the the shot is of her and then it like zooms out and pulls up mm-hmm. and it looks down as all of her body below her mouth falls, falls and like tumbles down the tree branches Ooh, where <laughs> the, the rest of the axe stays in the tree with the top of her head on That's it. That's the sound this body <laughs> makes as it's going down all these branches. Yeah. It sounds like they threw a bag of fruit down this <laughs> into some tree branches. <laughs> yeah uh it's great i love it and then chris uh says sorry about your friends sorry Sorry about about your friends friends. (laughs) (laughs) she so carly's dead now and it's down to just our our sexy leads yeah our single sexy leads Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're like we got we gotta knock this fucker out of the trees Mm -hmm. they say that and so he comes up with a big old plan to use a branch to friggin launch not uh, this is one of the plans in this where you know what decent plan i like it yeah yeah they you they pull a branch back on a tree and then are like hey come get me although every time they do this hey come get me it's so obviously Uh, make it sound like it's not a trap you guys (laughs) every time it's like hey uh i need you to come here I'm I, right here. Yeah, I need Please you. Please come murder me. I know that it doesn't sound right, but like I'm let I'm I, an invitation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it works. Yeah. Three finger heads over to there, and then straight into the line of the trap. Yep. And he lets go of the branch, and it knocks him out the tree, and he sounds like a turkey when he falls. <laughs> then our our other two mountain men are distracted because their friend just fell, mm-hmm. and uh, cut to a waterfall. We're not in the trees anymore. Yep. Uh, we're just we skip them getting down out of the trees. It doesn't matter. I guess. It's fine. We're, it's fine. We're moving on. We are under a waterfall now. Yeah, where they've set up camp for the night. Yeah, our sexy people. Yeah, set up camp. Uh, is there any interesting stuff that happens here? No, they. That this is when we learn that she is single because she just got dumped. Oh yeah, and then kind of blames herself because this was yeah. like a, this was like a Stella got a groove back camping trip. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> yeah she gets broken up with and all of her friends immediately uh you know arrange this camping trip so she feels like it's her fault that all her friends are dead. Yeah. Um, sorry about your friends. Sorry about your friends. Sorry about your friends. And they uh wake up the next morning and they they find a they they're, find a they're road. on a hill and yeah. they see a road that. We joked might possibly be an Acme painting it's of a road. It's just a loony. It's a Wile E. Coyote painting yeah. of a road. Right when they see the road and are like, we got to get there, they get ambushed. And the mountain men, because she's Eliza Dushku and the, the final girl, they, they just kidnap her. They don't kill her. Yeah. They keep her alive. Yeah. And they take her and they knock Chris down this hill. And he fucking oh, tumbles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he looks like a sack of taters going down this hill. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. But he does wind up on the road where, lucky him a cop just happens That's to come across right. him <laughs> and he tells the cop and uh, you know this is a west virginia cop and in this movie he's got to be all kind of incompetent so he gets out there and he's like what what you doing out here boy yeah and chris is like there there are people uh hunting us and my f- friends are dead they're dead and this cop says dead what people arrow through the eye yep he immediately <laughs> gets shot yeah which you know duh Oh, so then uh, one of the mountain men shows up just when Chris is about to grab the keys for this cop car. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, so he shoots, he shoots the cop. The mountain man shows up, and Chris is hiding under the cop car now. Yeah. And so he grabs onto the bottom of the police car. Yeah, he like does like a pull-up, a, <laughs> like a, a prone pull-up onto the car. Yeah, and so the mountain man drives back to his house. So he just gets a lift back to where Eliza Dushka is. Yeah. Yep. Which is great. And then, you know, it's 
they just kind of wrap it up. A little bit. It's a lot of um, I, around here is when I wrote down that the one mountain man looks like Riff Raff from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. He does, yeah. <laughs> A little guy. Yeah, he's guy. less articulate, but he looks <laughs> a little bit like him. Um, <laughs> Perhaps you'd both better come, come inside. inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's basically there's a big fight that I don't really care about. Well, he drives the police car into their building. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, and he drives over one of them, <laughs> yeah. pinning them to the floor. <laughs> they're, about, they're basically about to start chopping up Eliza Dushku and then bam car out of nowhere he drives Chris drives the car into their house yeah and over one of them <laughs> and then fights with the wrestler dude I think it's the wrestler dude he stabs him but then yeah. he comes back and they're all like she has to shoot him with the the arrow to put him down mm -hmm. and then the little guy comes out because you're like did they kill the little guy when they knocked him out of the tree because you're not sure but nope he no, was hiding in the back there, room yeah. he's there don't worry he's laughing a whole bunch yeah <laughs> and they fight they fight a whole lot. Yeah. At this and, point, uh, we both mentioned to each other, like, the freeway probably doesn't have traffic on it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> probably head straight back there and you'll be fine, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's sad to think, you know what? He could have just wasted those three or whatever hours sitting in traffic instead of wasting seven hours almost getting killed and watching other people get killed. Yeah. So, Although the rest of them would probably be dead. That's true. Yeah, they're kind of in but their territory at that point. But then he makes his appointment. Yeah, then he can do business and then get those scalpels. Then he can do business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he only has one shot left in the shotgun. Oh, boy. they So there's there's fire, basically, in the house. There's fire. I forget how it happens, but uh, the house is on fire. It's the, it's several, the end piece. So I think because of the car. I think the car, you know, when it when it drove into the house, uh, fire happened. That'll happen. Um, and... Chris has a, has a gun and he has one shot left, so he's got to make it count. So him and and Eliza Dushka are outside. Come on, you motherfuckers, just die. He shoots the gas tanks that are sitting in the back of the truck that crashed into the house, and the house explodes, and it sounds like James Brown. <laughs> It sounds like James <laughs> Brown when this house explodes. It's like, wow! <laughs> and they like fly away from it and we had to pause it and rewind it. Like the house sounded like James Brown. Yeah, and like... It does though. It might be. No, James thinks that it might be. I think it's... Well, they were talking about James Brown earlier. I know, but that's an insane thing you know to what? do. No, you're right. It's not, it's not James Brown. It's a James Brown imitator Stop. and nothing's worse than a James Brown James. imitator. Dude, no, that's insane. That's insane to one call back to that in that way. Wow. And I just, I don't know. <laughs> You're the one who was like, the credits have to have the song. They have that, to. That they, makes more sense, it though. It has to end and have it go, wow, I feel good. Anyway, yeah, it's the best. It's like the Wilhelm scream, but it's James <laughs> Brown for some reason. <laughs> So they blow up that house and they drive back to the gas station where it looks like the gas station attendant recognizes the truck because he gets all scared when he sees it coming and hides inside. But it's not the mountain man. It's Chris and Eliza Dushku. Mm -hmm. And he limps out and in a it's funny. It's kind of it's funny. Fun. It yeah. is. Cause it's it's kind of like, oh, he, man, you won't believe the day I've had kind yeah. of bullshit. He's over Cause it. Because he just like silently <laughs> limps from the truck to the, the map and rips it down and takes it mm -hmm. and gets back in the truck all without a word. Uh, yeah, I thought That's that funny. was funny, too. Yeah. Like, they've had a long day. I, what? I kind of like this movie. It's fine. It's fine. It's like right in the middle for me, you know? Sure. Because there are some things in it that I'm like, that was good, I think. What's Eliza Dushku famous from? Was she already established by this point? I always think of Bring point? It On. Was that before this? Uh, this yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, yeah. This is this is a post-Scream movie. Yeah. Sexy young teens. Some established name star. Actor, yeah, named yeah. actor. Uh, a little bit of gore, but not crazy. No nudity, because those movies tend not to have that. It's not, like, uh, grimy or sleazy like that. Yeah. 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 This is, I think, this is a great example of like the post scream slash. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, a car drives into the credits. Oh yeah, <laughs> which because yeah, the credits like start crazy, and then like a a car interrupts them. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a cop car, and it's 
cops coming to a cop coming to investigate this house that burnt down. Dude, what are you doing? At night. It's nighttime. He doesn't have the fire department. He's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to kick around this smoldering rubble so by myself at night with hope nothing it, but the hope headlights. Hope nothing collapses on top of me. Let's do this. Yeah. And, uh, oh, one of the the uh, mountain men is alive. It's three finger. And he yells oh. at, he screams as he runs at the camera. <laughs> Just his yeah. turkey laugh. And this is when I thought, okay, second chance to uh, needle drop James Brown. <laughs> And it didn't happen. Again, <sighs> five more of these movies? How? How the How? fuck? I, at least, because, okay, you mentioned there were five more. And I thought, how the fuck? And then when I looked on the Wikipedia, I realized there were prequels. And that makes a little bit more sense, at least. I guess. Because there's more, you know... <laughs> You can at least fill. No, what am I saying? I don't. I don't see <laughs> what. What uh, am I talking about? I don't see either way because it's not like the mountain men. Die. All three of them could conceivably still be alive at the end of this one. Yeah. So there's no need to do a prequel. Like, what's the prequel doing? Is it telling us how these mountain men came yeah, to be? Like, I mean, what the fuck's? Because you know they're not. We're not going to see these characters ever again. Like. Any of the, oh, the what the prequel is these teens living their normal ass lives. Yeah, like there's no, we will never see Eliza Dushku in another wrong turn movie. Unless I'm wrong, I can't be wrong. There's no way because starting no, with the third okay. one, they're direct to video. Okay, so the, it gets one theatrical sequel, then a direct to video sequel, and then three direct to video prequels. Yeah, yeah. I was curious um, if there was an active fan base for this like there a is. dedicated there i i was doing for sure there research. is a lot of kill count requests people say that they're very gory mm -hmm. they're like you want some good gore which no <laughs> i don't not anymore uh but <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no uh. i don't want to censor things uh you want some good gore do the wrong turn movies wrong turn five is crazy yeah i okay. found some wrong turn fan fiction fanfic written fan fiction yes, i did based on what on these characters uh -huh. on chris and jesse um i a lot of where were you fan on the fiction internet based huh? on the mountain men oh where then i was googling wrong turn fan base because i was curious if any or like wrong turn fan site to see if anything came up mm -hmm. but then google suggested wrong turn fan fiction and i was like well, what do we have here and <laughs> I'm conflicted because I think it'd be so fun to read some, but also I feel like fan fiction is a very personal thing. And it oh. would make me really bummed out if we read any and then people went and found it and were mean. Sure. You know? Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna gonna be a dick to someone who was just doing a fun thing for mm. themselves. But it is incredible that it exists. It is. Yeah. But then again, it came out in two thousand three and back then on the internet, what else were you gonna do besides write fan fiction? Y'all really like this movie. Yeah, people, because, yeah, I kept getting emails about it, too. Let us know why. What? Why uh, do you like this? Yeah, what's, Tell us. what speaks to you about this movie? Because yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe people just grew up with it. I could see that because it's, yeah. Because it's fine. There's some fun moments in it that yeah. if you grew up with it, like, they stick with you. Yeah. Because even having only watched it a, a little bit, as like, around the time it came out, because, like, this comes out, I'm 13, 14 years old, like, I, I didn't grow up with this. I That was around the age when I started to kind of get out of horror movies for a little bit. So I didn't mm -hmm. experience this a lot, but there were still things from it that I remember. Like, dad, what people? I'm getting shot in the yeah. eye. Like, that's a fun moment. One of the actresses, I think the actress that played Francine, I clicked on her Wikipedia because I was just curious with, you know, other things these people have been in. She's in another very, very fun early 2000s horror that I would love to rewatch because I saw it in theaters. What? Cry Wolf. Did you ever watch that? No, I don't Guys, even know what that is. I don't want to. I don't want to review too many early two thousands, late nineties movies in a row. It's yeah. very. It's very tempting for us because those are the most fun. But yeah. uh, it's a movie basically about a group of of college kids that play a version of mafia or oh. werewolf. Oh, fun! But then people die for real. Also, John Bon Jovi is in it, what and I fuck? saw it in the theater because of him. Because of the weird viral marketing campaign it had. Nice. Yeah. Was this post Blair Witch? Yeah. That's right. Because there was a, you could play a version of the game online. Oh, okay. 
So it was basically proto, it was mafia. Mm. So my friends and I were into it. We actually do have in mind the next movie we're going to review, but we oh, won't we won't okay. say the title of it, but you should be fucking excited. Yeah, you should be very like, excited. Get hype for the next movie review. We will say it's not it's not an early two thousands movie. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not a nineties movie. Nope. It's uh, older. It is yeah, it is sure to be a trip. And it's going to be such a fun ride that we're gonna bring along a couple of friends yeah. to review it. Yeah. So uh if you're if you're a longtime fan of us get extra excited <laughs> yeah i will say it's a movie that james put on and i was like just put on something dumb i can have on in the background because i i can't really like watch yeah, I, was, I was gonna do a review for patrons full attention right yeah. now and three minutes in we both said we need to turn this off because it's too good it's too good because i wanted in on that <laughs> i told james he can't just like use it for himself on patreon i want in on it yeah so we're, we're gonna so i hope that gets you excited yeah, it'll be great. I'm mm-hmm. looking very much forward to it. In the meantime, do we know what next week's episode is going to be? Um, No. Okay. We'll figure <laughs> it out, and then you'll learn. Yeah. Uh, you know, a great way to stay on top of that and to find out is to follow Dead Meat on social media, at Dead Meat James, on Twitter and Instagram, mostly Twitter. And I'm Carebeck, that's C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C, on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, that's deadmeatstore.com. We just got pins back in stock. Yep, so all the pins are there. That's, uh, I don't know when this episode's coming out. What's the date today? Today is the 24th of May. 2018 yeah so that's when we got pins back in stock <laughs> also make sure if you're enjoying these episodes or even if you're not and you just want to lie to help us out rate and review us on itunes or whatever app you're using to listening mm-hmm. you're using to listen to us mm-hmm. and rate us you know five stars yep and is there anything else is that it cool well thank you for listening and or watching it's always a pleasure to do these And until next time, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Podcast.